Hi, everybody. It is amazing to be here. I was here last year, had the honor of speaking in front of this incredible audience, and uh, a lot has happened in the last 12 months. You ready for some good news? So Proverbs 3.9 says, honor God with your wealth. It's a very simple Bible verse. But in the current state of the American economy, it's become very difficult to honor God with our wealth because it feels like every single day we're confronted with another entity that has mocked the name of God with their products, with their advertising, with their corporate donations, whether it's Starbucks funding abortions, Target deciding to lecture your children about gender ideology when you're simply trying to buy a swimsuit or a pair of pants, Organizations, and this will shock you, that focus on the baby care space, diapers and wipes, celebrating and financially supporting abortion. Take that in for a second. There are baby brands, in fact, every single one of the major United States baby brands, diapers and wipes, that vocally or financially support abortion. Hello Bello, one of the major leading diaper brands, last year came out and announced that they would actually contribute $4,400 to protect reproductive rights to every employee of theirs at this diaper company that wanted to get an abortion. Coterie, which is about the nicest diaper money can buy, came out last year and said our team feels, quote, lost without abortion access. If there's not a greater parody of what's happening in the United States than that exact reality. That would be like me saying, I want to start a male shoe company. In order to achieve success, I'm going to advocate for the termination of all men. The United States economy has lost truth, has lost morality, has lost decency, and some of the major corporations of this country have started to look far more like agents of a bureaucratic regime that is destined to mock God rather than trustworthy financial institutions that you can trust with your dollars because you know they're just going to try to provide value to you in every transaction. That's what the American economy used to be. You couldn't win unless you provided value. But then with the rise of ESG and DEI and these other ideologies that have corrupted our financial system, you have companies today that are focusing far more on canceling conservatives, stifling your right to free speech, and lecturing you about abortion than they are on providing value. But here's the good news. I told you I'd share good news, so here's the good news. My name is Michael Seifert. We started our team at Public Square in February of 2021, what has become the largest network of constitution-respecting, liberty-loving, God-fearing businesses and consumers the world has ever seen. In 30 months, since we even had the idea, we've created a network of consumers, well over a million and a half members, over 65,000 small business vendors that love the country, the constitution, and the values that it protects. They respect our Judeo-Christian heritage and they would never lecture you about gender ideology when you're trying to buy a pair of pants. We've been able to do that just 30 months after having the idea because the country is ready for solutions. We could tell you all day long all the companies you shouldn't go to, but if I did not pair that with a list of ones that you can trust because they love the values that have made our country so special in the first place, then I'm not doing my job. Not only that, we just went public this summer on the New York Stock Exchange. We're the first company that I'm aware of on the New York Stock Exchange that has said we don't have a DEI or ESG score because we fundamentally disagree with the principles. This all started a few years ago. It was about a decade ago, actually. I was driving in St. Louis, Missouri, visiting some family friends, and there was a Chick-fil-A on the side of the road. It was about 11.30 a.m. on a Tuesday. So it was past Chick-fil-A breakfast, and it was kind of before lunch. So it was odd that there was a two-hour line out the door. A two-hour line out the door of consumers with lawn chairs, blankets, umbrellas. These people were taking time out of their work to go sit in line for a Chick-fil-A. So I pull on the side of the road, and I Google, what's going on at Chick-fil-A? Turns out it was National Protest Chick-fil-A Day. The Alphabet Mafia was very mad at Chick-fil-A, and they wanted to make sure that the nation heard their voice against this Judeo-Christian organization that they believed was causing harm to the fabric of America and the social justice battle. What was fascinating, though, is that there were only five protesters out front. 
They had these rinky-dinky signs, and they were holding it up, and they were trying to make their voices heard, but the two-hour line out the door of proud supporters of Christian values completely silenced them. It was amazing to witness. I remember thinking almost a decade ago, if one day our country could get to a place where there was easy access for consumers like this to support businesses like this that are willing to take a stand, and I hope and pray that Chick-fil-A continues to make a stand, because unfortunately they've been under a lot of pressure. I hope and pray they'll keep pressing in. But if there would ever be a movement of folks that would take their dollars and support businesses like this with any regular cadence, we would massively shift society toward the values of we the people. Fast forward to 2020. Are y'all familiar with Goya Foods? Yeah, yeah, good old Goya. So the CEO, Bob, in 2020 came out and he said, you know what, I'm voting for Trump. That's all he said. He said, I'm voting for Trump. I believe Americans deserve a right to choose who they elect. And as for me and my house, we're choosing uh, to follow the candidate that aligns most with our faith and our values. And so we're going with President Trump. That's all they said. Largest Latin American food provider in the United States. So AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York, came out and she said, we should initiate a boycott because I am Latin American and this man does not represent us, and so let's go boycott Goya. You know what happened? <laughs> it was the largest month of sales Goya's ever had. You had everyone flocking to the grocery stores to buy Goya. You had white women from Kansas making chalupas. And the funny conclusion to this story is that the boycott was so ineffective that Goya actually gave Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez employee of the month and hung her picture. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was brilliant. So what's my point? If you just take conservative voters in 2020... Okay, that we know of, that they're willing to admit. If you just take conservative voters from 2020 and you actually break that down by GDP, how much GDP does that conservative voter represent? The cumulative total was $7 trillion. $7 trillion is the third largest economy in the world by GDP. Do you know one company in the United States today that's even trying to market to us? They've all forgotten us. Bud Light mocks us, Target tries to lecture us, Bank of America cancels us. It's the third largest economy in the world by GDP, only behind the United States more broadly and China. That's it. If you just take conservative voters from 2020, that's a larger economy than India, Japan, Germany, Singapore. The power of our wallets is immense. And it's about time we wake up and realize it. You want to change the country? We got to pray. We're now a company of scores of employees. We're publicly traded. We're running fast. We're growing because of the strength of the American people. But even in the early days when we had less than five employees, you want to know the third employee we hired? It was a prayer person who literally, her only role was to spend 20 hours a week praying for the company. That's it. Because we knew if this thing... Jim and Kathy, big shout out to Jim and Kathy. These, these two have been praying for us from the early days when it was just an idea for a community that would be centered around our Judeo-Christian values and principles so that you could put those, those principles into action daily with your purchases. They saw it from the beginning, and so they bathed the company in prayer. And from the very early days when we had one employee, and now when we have scores, we end every single all-hands meeting in prayer because we knew if this is ever going to work, if we're ever going to shift the country back, if we're ever going to have a new American renaissance that actually embraces the values that have made this country such an incredible experiment in the first place, it has to be bathed in prayer. All glory to the one who is worthy of it all. Otherwise, this doesn't work. So it happens by praying. It happens by voting. We have to vote. Gosh, we talk every day about voting with our dollars. we got to vote at the ballot box, too. And a lot of us know that the system has very deep flaws. you still got to vote. Press in. 
get involved in our community. We gotta vote. But finally, stand. How do we stand? Well, it looks like realizing the everyday actions that you have within the sphere of influence that you occupy. Do you have a wallet? Do you buy coffee? Do you invest in a retirement fund? Do you bank with certain vendors? If you do, if you say yes to any of those things, you have to realize that what you spend your money on is what you empower. If you wanna look at why decisions are made in society today, look at who profits. What if we the people could profit again? That's our dream, that we would have an economy that actually works for the not so silent majority anymore. So we believe that standing ultimately is accessible to every single American. We believe that your ability to vote extends far beyond the ballot box, that you actually have the opportunity to take advantage every day in your communities to build something special through the power of your wallet. We've created that at Public Square. We're the nation's largest marketplace of those types of businesses. You can download the app for free. But we're more than that. We're just trying to build solutions. In fact, like I told you earlier, every single major diaper brand in the United States today is vocally or financially pro-abortion. We saw that. My wife and I just had a 10-month-old. We love our little girl. We're like, heck no, we're not putting her in a pro-abortion diaper. That makes zero sense morally. And it also makes zero sense economically. In fact, I was with some Jewish Wall Street bankers that are total Democrats three months ago in New York, and I shared that story with them. And he goes, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Even they're willing to admit it. But we were really disheartened by that. So you know what we did? We started a diaper company. It may feel random for a marketplace that is a tech platform to start a diaper company, but we saw a need and we wanted to fill it, just like you can see needs in your community and want to fill them. So we started the nation's only pro-life, pro-family, pro-freedom diaper company. It's called Every Life, and the message is simple. No matter where you're from, no matter what you look like, the color of your skin, your socioeconomic status, or the circumstances of your conception, every life is a miracle and is worthy of protection and celebrating. And because my wife and I are very picky about what we put on our baby, these are the best diapers money can buy. We've wanted to make sure that these diapers are high in quality. And so now we're diaper makers. And you know what? We found another need last week in the B2B software space to kind of critique at one of some of what Salesforce is doing. So you know what we're launching here in a few weeks? An alternative to that. And we're going to keep going and going and building and building until... <laughs> we as the American people feel like for all of life's daily needs... You have the ability to spend money at a company that would never offend your set of values, but in fact would actually do the opposite, would celebrate them. These businesses on our platform, they wouldn't call themselves political, they'd call themselves principled. Because it goes so much deeper than politics. There's a battle of good versus evil taking place. And the last thing that we need to be doing is funding evil. So, is it an overnight thing? Of course not. Of course not. I'm... I have an iPhone behind the stage. Like, there's not a phone brand yet that aligns with my set of core principles or at the very least respects them yet. So we talk a lot about the parallel economy. We talk a lot about the patriotic economy. And at the end of the day, we have to have the long-term vision in mind. I'm 28 years old. We're real young. We've got a long road ahead of us. But I'll be darned if I would allow for our country to fall away from its destiny because we got apathetic. No way. My daughter's future is on the line. You think I'm letting that happen? I'll finish with this. The reason we named the company Public Square is because Many theologians and historians believe that when Jesus said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my ecclesia, the most literal translation in the modern era of ecclesia is the public square. He could have said synagogue. He didn't say synagogue. He said ecclesia. Pastor Jack Hibbs, someone I deeply admire, talks about this often, that Jesus' call for us is so much farther than just the church. 
It's so much greater than just a holy huddle in a building on a Sunday morning, as Governor DeSantis was saying earlier. It expands out into all the facets of culture, into the way in which we communicate with our community, into the activism we participate in, into the money that we spend. The public square should be a center of commerce, relationship, community, activism, where all of it is centered upon the foundational principles that were established and protected by our Lord and Savior. That's what the public square is supposed to be. Unfortunately today, if you drive through Georgetown, the public square looks like a, almost like a mural to Baal or this, this altar to, to gender ideology. But you look at these historical buildings and you dream of what was. And I feel like I'm homesick for a land I never even knew. But I want that. I want that back. But it's not going to happen if we just pray. We have to pray. Everything starts there, like I mentioned. But if we don't put our faith into works, y'all know what the Bible calls it. It's dead. We can't just vote. We need to vote. We have to. It's imperative. It's our duty as a responsible American. But if we want to discover the land our founding fathers talk about, that they dreamed of, if we want to discover the true principles of liberty, not for liberty's sake, but because we know the author, it looks like standing day in, day out with the money you spend, start somewhere. Maybe it's your next cup of coffee. Maybe it's the next item of clothing you buy. Maybe it's the next financial transaction you participate in. We have a bank at Public Square that we found on our own platform. Chase called us and said, hey, we're a little concerned about this whole conservative thing. Like, excuse me, you're our bank. You can't ask us that. He said, yeah, we're just, you know, you guys are really vocal about the value. We're just trying to figure out what you are exactly. I said, all right, well, we're done. We canceled the bank account the next day, and we found a bank on our own platform that would respect our values, and now we've been banking with them for two years, and we absolutely love our relationship with them because they love the country, the Constitution, and the values that it protects. Ladies and gentlemen, I am ecstatic about the next decade. I'm ecstatic, because I remember that Chick-fil-A line. Those people exist. They're us. They're you. I'm ecstatic, because I remember the Goya boycott. Boycott. And how successful it was. I get to hear testimonies every single day of the hair salon in San Diego, California, that was about to go out of business, but she joined our platform, and her profits quintupled in a matter of three weeks. I get ecstatic because there's a pet shop owner in Alabama that experienced a 1,000% surge in sales because she's getting connected to the parallel economy. I'm so ecstatic because there was a person who went into a physical therapy's office on our platform that said, the physical therapist prayed for me. I've never felt so welcomed in an experience. That's the economy we want to build, and we'd love to build it with you. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Great to meet you all.